SpaceX is making a bold and unusual move at Starbase, converting the massive orbital launch mount into a temporary test stand for Starship. It's a workaround born out of urgency, after the Ship 36 explosion crippled the Massey's test site, forcing SpaceX to improvise in order to maintain Starship's development pace. At the core of this workaround is a Starship transport stand, typically used for ground handling. It's now being structurally reinforced to handle the stresses of static fire, including new internal bracing to stabilize the Raptor vacuum engines, which are particularly sensitive to thrust displacement due to their large nozzles. To fit the OLM, originally built for the larger Super Heavy boosters, the stand's legs were trimmed, and stainless steel panels are being installed around its frame to block exhaust from the ship's engines escaping laterally. This shielding ensures that exhaust gases are directed downward and do not escape through the openings, thereby protecting the internal structures of the orbital launch mount from heat and debris. Meanwhile, the OLM itself is being retrofitted. All 20 Super Heavy hold-down clamps have been removed to accommodate the test stand, and engineers are installing a new propellant feed system tailored to Starship. Since the existing booster quick disconnect hardware is incompatible with the ship, new propellant lines have been routed through a modified booster QD hood, leading to a dedicated ship QD system now under construction. The structural frame is already in place, and the main QD assembly responsible for routing methane, oxygen, high-pressure helium, and nitrogen purge was recently spotted at the production site awaiting installation. Though the tank farm remains unchanged, Starship's smaller propellant tanks and tighter pressure tolerances require more precise flow control. SpaceX is reprogramming software for valve sequencing, pump modulation, and flow rates to match these needs. Once hardware and software upgrades are complete, the system will undergo full validation, leak checks, cryogenic flow testing, and proofing before any static fire can proceed. Ship 37 is the first vehicle said to use this modified setup. Now, in Mega Bay 2 with all six Raptors installed, it's undergoing final checks ahead of the static fire. Once testing is complete, it will pair with Booster 16 already cryo-tested and hot-fired for Flight 10. Elon Musk recently stated that Flight 10 could take place in approximately three weeks, suggesting a target window in the first or second week of August. Supporting this timeline, SpaceX has filed a request with the FCC for communication permissions related to Starship Flight 10, with a window opening August 4. While this does not confirm a launch on that date, it indicates that all pre-launch tests and final vehicle integration are expected to be complete by then. Final approval will still depend on regulatory clearances, including FAA licensing and airspace maritime notices. Following Flight 10, SpaceX plans to proceed with Flight 11, which will feature Ship 38, the final vehicle in the Block 2 Starship series, which is currently being prepared for cryogenic proof testing. Based on Musk's timeline, it is likely that the OLM will be reconfigured back to launch configuration immediately after Ship 37's static fire for Flight 10 preparations. After that launch, the mount will again be reconfigured to support Ship 38 static fire. This sequencing ensures flexibility, allowing SpaceX to incorporate lessons from Flight 10 into Ship 38 before it flies. For Flight 11, Ship 38 is expected to pair with Booster 15, a previously flown and caught booster from Flight 8. Since Booster 15 is already flight-proven, it will likely require only a single static fire for verification, without additional cryogenic testing. By the time Flight 11 is completed, SpaceX anticipates that repairs and rebuild at the Massey test site will be finalized. This would restore the dedicated facility for future ship-level static fires, freeing up the OLM to support orbital launches. Recovery operations are in full swing at Massey's following the Ship 36 explosion, with teams clearing debris and dismantling damaged ground support systems. After removing compromised components such as pumps, vaporizers, and heat exchangers from the methane tank farm, crews have now begun extracting the primary propellant storage tanks. Three vertical methane tanks were removed last week after structural inspections deemed them unfit for further use. These tanks were later spotted at SpaceX's McGregor facility, likely for further analysis and potential reuse evaluation. Meanwhile, a new horizontal storage tank was recently staged near the methane farm, likely intended as a replacement for the removed vertical tanks. Any additional tanks found compromised during ongoing assessments will likely be replaced as well. The destroyed Starship static fire stand is also undergoing disassembly. Technicians have begun removing the hold-down clamps, suggesting an intent to refurbish the stand rather than replace it entirely. However, the adjacent propellant gantry, responsible for supporting fuel delivery lines, was completely destroyed and will need full reconstruction. 
The feed lines running from the tank farm to the test stand were also heavily damaged and will be rebuilt from the ground up. Debris removal is also underway inside the flame trench, where the flame diverter will likely need structural repairs before returning to service. Once the rebuild is complete, Ship 39, the first of the Block 3 starships, is expected to be the first vehicle tested at Massey's. Since the facility previously supported only Block 2 vehicles, the reconstruction includes infrastructure upgrades to accommodate the larger and more advanced Block 3 hardware, signaling a major transition in Starship's development program. As SpaceX advances toward Flight 10, construction of the second orbital launch pad is progressing rapidly. A major milestone was reached with all 20 booster hold-down clamp arms installed on the pad B mount. Meanwhile, the hold-down clamp assemblies are being prepared at the Sanchez site for final installation. These clamps are critical for securing the Super Heavy booster during pre-launch operations. They feature a different design and functionality compared to those at Pad A, which I've covered in more detail in a previous video. Feel free to check it out using the link in the description. Pad B also features a dual quick disconnect system, one each for liquid methane and liquid oxygen, offering dedicated propellant feeds to the booster. Protective hoods are being installed to shield both QDs from engine exhaust and weather, while the QD assemblies themselves, currently staged at the Sanchez site, are expected to be installed soon. Inside the flame trench, installation of steel panels to shield the floor from the intense thermal and vibrational stress of booster ignition is nearing completion. Outside the trench, rebar work is progressing for a concrete floor extension to protect the surrounding area from redirected exhaust. Teams continue adding steel cladding to the upper sections of the launch tower to protect internal components from engine exhaust during mid-air recovery. Unlike Pad A, which primarily supports booster catch operations, Pad B is being prepared to catch the upper stage starship. That means engine exhaust during descent will impact higher up the tower, and the protective shielding is being extended accordingly. At this pace, Pad B could be ready to support launches within four to five months. SpaceX is reportedly developing a new project called Starfall, aimed at leveraging the unique microgravity environment of orbit for advanced drug research and manufacturing, with missions launched aboard Starship. The initiative was revealed through industry leaks reported by major media outlets on July 15, though SpaceX has not issued an official statement. Under Starfall, Starship would deploy small, uncrewed capsules containing pharmaceutical payloads, such as drug compounds, bioreactors, or compact lab modules, into Earth orbit. These capsules would remain in microgravity for the duration of their experiments before re-entering for recovery and analysis on Earth. Microgravity manufacturing offers significant advantages, such as the growth of high-purity protein crystals and novel drug formulations unattainable on Earth. It also improves bioprocessing efficiency, potentially enhancing drug effectiveness and reducing R&D costs. Starfall is positioned as a large-scale evolution of missions conducted by Varda Space Industries, which has so far flown four pharmaceutical payloads using Falcon 9 and Electron rockets. With Starship's greater capacity, SpaceX aims to offer a more robust and frequent orbital research platform. While no official partnerships have been announced, sources indicate that SpaceX is internally developing the program and in talks with pharmaceutical and biotech firms for future collaborations. The first commercial Starfall mission is reportedly targeted for launch by the end of the decade, marking a new frontier in orbital drug manufacturing capabilities. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA's Parker Solar Probe has set a historic record by capturing the closest images ever taken of the Sun, offering unprecedented views of the solar atmosphere. Launched in August 2018, the probe was designed to study the Sun's outer atmosphere, the corona, and its impact on the solar system. Its highly elliptical orbit, shaped by repeated Venus flybys, gradually brings it closer to the Sun for detailed observations. On December 24, 2024, during its 22nd orbit, Parker reached just 6.1 million kilometers from the Sun's surface, traveling at 690,000 kilometers per hour, making it the fastest object ever built by humans. The visuals from this flyby, released last week, revealed a violent and dynamic solar atmosphere. Parker recorded multiple coronal mass ejections, massive bursts of plasma and charged particles colliding and merging, which can intensify space weather and threaten satellites, power grids, and astronaut safety. Parker also observed the region where the Sun's magnetic field begins forming the heliospheric current sheet, a vast, spiraling boundary where the magnetic field flips between northward and southward polarity. This structure helps shape the flow of solar wind and the spread of solar storms. By approaching so close, 
The probe provided rare insight into how this boundary originates and changes, improving models for solar storm forecasting. Additionally, the probe recorded switchbacks, rapid zigzag reversals in magnetic field direction, linked to narrow tube-like magnetic funnels on the solar surface. These structures are believed to accelerate the fast solar wind, which can reach speeds over 640 kilometers per second. By venturing closer than any spacecraft before, Parker is helping solve long-standing mysteries. How the solar wind forms, what drives its acceleration, and how solar magnetic structures evolve. Following the December milestone, the probe completed two more close approaches in March and June, with its 25th flyby set for September 15th. Although its primary mission concluded with the 24th flyby in June, Parker will continue operations as the Sun enters the declining phase of its 11-year activity cycle, delivering critical data to advance space weather forecasting. Axia Mission 4 returned to Earth after an 18-day stay aboard the International Space Station, marking a major milestone for private spaceflight and international collaboration. Organized by Houston-based Axiom Space, AX-4, which launched aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on June 25, was the company's fourth crewed commercial flight to the ISS. The mission was led by Peggy Whitson, former NASA astronaut and Axiom's Director of Human Spaceflight, who holds the U.S. record for cumulative time in space. Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla of the Indian Air Force, currently training under ISRO's Gaganyaan Human Spaceflight Program, served as the mission pilot. Rounding out the crew were mission specialists Savish Aznanski, a Polish engineer representing ESA and CERN, and Tiber Kapu, a Hungarian mechanical engineer participating in Hungary's first astronaut mission since the Soviet era. After a 24-hour transit, Crew Dragon Grace docked with the ISS on June 26, where the team was welcomed by the station's seven-member international crew. During their mission, the AX-4 astronauts conducted over 60 scientific experiments, the most ever by an Axiom crew, spanning multiple disciplines, including biology, materials sciences, physical sciences, and technology development, all designed to leverage the unique microgravity environment of the ISS. The crew also supported ongoing ISS experiments, assisted with daily operations, and participated in public outreach, including ham radio sessions with students worldwide. They shared their journey through social media and live broadcasts, bringing space closer to the public. On July 14th, after a farewell ceremony, the crew boarded Dragon, donned spacesuits, and performed system checks. Once cleared, the spacecraft undocked and began its 23-hour long return journey to Earth. A precise 18-minute deorbit burn set the re-entry trajectory, and on July 15th, Dragon re-entered Earth's atmosphere, deployed parachutes, and eventually splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. The SpaceX recovery team quickly secured the capsule, opened the hatch, and assisted the crew out. After initial medical checks on board the recovery ship, the astronauts were flown to Houston, where they reunited with their families. AX-4 set new benchmarks in commercial spaceflight and microgravity research, with its success expected to inspire broader global participation in the space economy. The next Axia mission, AX-5, is scheduled for May next year, with crew details to be announced soon. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.